Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Elevation Models and Application course. And this is 16th lecture and uh, we will continue where we left earlier about the uh, surface hydrologic modeling based on uh, digital elevation model. So, uh, in, uh, in the previous lecture what we have discussed that uh, how to do this modeling by first filling the digital elevation model, removing the sinks, local pits and other then flow direction, flow accumulation, drainage network and stream ordering. These things we have already discussed. Now, uh, we will proceed in this one and there are few more derivatives of uh, surface hydrologic modeling and uh, based on digital elevation model we can drive and the major one is the flow length. As, a, as you can see that the flow length of an arbitrary pixel is determined by summing the incremental distance from center to center of each pixel along the flow path from the selected pixel to the outlet pixel. So, this flow length is calculated and uh, this is used for various purposes which we will see little later. Flow length uh, can be calculated in two directions uh, either upstream or downstream distances or we can also bring some weight maybe uh, uh, along the uh, as uh, impedance and uh, this weighted distance can also be included while calculating upstream or downstream uh, for and this is calculated for each cell and uh, uh, the major use of uh, this uh, flow length uh, output from a surface hydrologic modeling is to calculate the length of longest path uh, flow within a given basin. So, which one would be the longest or in reverse we can say which is the shortest path of a uh, given basin or catchment we can calculate. And uh, uh, this uh, measure is often used to calculate the time of concentration of a basin. So, in uh, flood related studies this is very important that uh, what would be the situation uh, of uh, flow of water along particular length or a stream or maybe at the outlet. So, this we will see in little detail and uh, uh, this uh, upstream if we take the example uh, like uh, flow length upstream option if we choose it is just like uh, flow accumulation which we have already discussed and uh, uh, this also uh, flow length output can be used to create a distance area diagram and uh, of uh, hypothetical rainfall and runoff uh, events. So, we can simulate do some modeling work here using the weight uh, raster some uh, some raster maybe a soil cover maybe a land use cover as an impedance uh, to the movement uh, towards the down uh, slope side or downstream side. And this output the flow length can also be used to create a distance area diagram of hypothetical rainfall and runoff events using weight raster and other thing. Let us say take this example here uh, the same digital elevation model which we have been using earlier uh, for uh, surface hydrologic modeling on which uh, this uh, downstream flow length has been calculated and uh, as you and uh, top of this uh, uh, stream network which is uh, having a stellar order has been overlaid just to and uh, depict the, um, the uh, different uh, flow lengths and uh, when we have extracted this one what we can see here uh, that uh, at the outlet the flow length is uh, uh, very little or very less as compared to the flow length at the boundary especially at the water side boundary. So, this is how because uh, uh, this downstream flow length basically at the outlet it should be 0 and this is what we will see here this is the distribution of flow length in form of histogram as we can see here that uh, this uh, uh, the highest flow length which is depicted in blue color are having uh, some representation here, but the maximum is uh, this uh, light blue color and so on so forth. And uh, that pore point as indicated earlier is here. So, in case of a downstream flow length as the example we have just seen the minimum flow length would be at the pore point or out the outlet of the water side or catchment and the maximum would be would be at the water side boundary 
and generally flow length assigned to the outlet uh, pixel is 0. So, um, theoretically it should be uh, 0 at the outlet and uh, when it rains in a within that uh, uh, basin or catchment a drop of uh, water and, and you know getting or landing somewhere in the basin must first travel some distance before reaching the outlet. So, that 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 will give us the basically the flow length and assuming uh, constant flow velocities uh, because uh, this is modeling. So, some assumption have to be there one assumption is that each drop has to flow another assumption here that the flow uh, velocity will be constant. Uh, so, that uh, the pixel with the greatest flow length to the outlet represents hydrology hydrologically most re remote pixel. So, the, the one which is having highest length and uh, that water or that drop is coming from the maximum must have traveled the maximum length. And uh, 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 the flow length uh, 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 is divided by flow velocity represents a representative lag time for the basin. And uh, as I have mentioned that this flow length is used uh, uh, in the uh, flood uh, forecasting or flood modeling. So, there it can play a very important role and this lag time quantifies how long before the entire basin is contributing to flow at the outlet and is a representative scale of the basin. Now, uh, the next thing which we can do here uh, uh, this in this surface hydrologic modeling is delineation of water set boundary. And uh, this is uh, uh, after once the flow accumulation has been calculated or flow length uh, has also been generated then it becomes very easy to delineate water set boundary. What basically is water set boundary is the determining determination or a delineating the contributory area above a set of cells in a raster. So, the outlet you decide uh, like uh, this example we have seen earlier that at the outlet uh, uh, if we if we take uh, this uh, as a outlet uh, then this becomes the water set boundary if we take outlet here that might be a water set boundary or uh, might go little up. So, basically it is the contributory area to a outlet and water set is set to a uh, set of all pixels whose downstream uh, flow path passes through a selected outlet pixel. So, whatever the water will uh, fall within that uh, catchment or water set has to come out of that outlet this condition is there and the value of each uh, water set will be taken from the value of the source in the input raster or digital elevation model or feature 4 point data set. And this is one example uh, on the same digital elevation model which have been we have been using in this uh, uh, course and uh, when uh, this uh, this is uh, option is automatic delineation of water sets delineate all water set whose uh, uh, cells are more than or equal to 500 within that uh, water set and it has delineated. The only problem is that uh, our input uh, digital elevation model had a uh, uh, almost a rectangular shape uh, whereas, at the boundaries at some places the water set could not be delineated because the the outlet of say particularly say this water set or these water sets might be on the other side or beyond the um, digital elevation model which we have taken. So, except for boundaries within that uh, study area or within that DM all those uh, water set which are having uh, area more than or equal to 500 cells have been delineated automatically. Of course, there are manual methods. Uh, are also there where user will um, uh, decide or uh, did, uh, you know put a pore point and accordingly uh, the uh, water set will be delineated. And this is a interactive way of uh, delineating water set boundary that means once I click here then automatically it will delineate the water set uh, at this point. But if I click here uh, or say example here then it will delineate the water set above this pore point. So, uh, of course, it has to 
uh, the, the, the theme on which you would be delineating watershed that has to be flow accumulation theme. So, interactive, interactively one can delineate water sets or automatically using a thresh, threshold value L, as the example given here and uh, that uh, 500 or more cells a falling in one, one water set delineated. So, both, both options are available, few more examples are here just for comparison. This is when the threshold value was kept at 500 cells and these number of water set have been delineated and when this threshold value was uh, 1000 had, has been made double, then only few water sets have been delineated. So, uh, depending on our requirements, uh, we can delineate the water set uh, uh, automatically or sub water sets within a uh, large water set that is also possible. So, once uh, we are having this flow accumulation theme available after uh, first few steps of surface hydrologic modeling process then we can uh, get this, these kind of results. Now, what are the different characteristics also which we can determine uh, a, through this surface hydrologic modeling of a water set. So, these are the mainly important characteristics of water set are size, we can determine the size that means we can measure the area of water set, we can also measure the perimeter of water set we can uh, measure or uh, this uh, uh, the shape of the water set. So, we can identify the shape of water set, it is very important and uh, the shape plays very important role uh, in flood modeling or in flood analysis because a, a circular water set or a, you know a water set uh, in which a, all a small drains are bringing water at a center point at one time then there are chances of flooding. But if it is a linear water set, uh, then chances of flooding uh, are very less. Uh, so, the shape of water set plays very important role for several such uh, studies including flood in soil erosion and others. Uh, physiography also, uh, we can know that uh, what is the physiography and uh, uh, these climate inputs uh, can also be uh, brought because uh, you may be having uh, uh, meteorological or climatic data for a large area and you want to delineate only for your area of interest or a particular water set using that water set boundary over a large theme you can detect those things. Drainage of course, land use from maybe from the satellite data and land use classification can be performed. The vegetation cover can also be identified uh, maybe geology and soils which is required for uh, soil related studies or in some other uh, maybe other part other parameters related with hydrology, groundwater hydrology that is hydrogeology may be socioeconomic. So, all these various uh, characteristics of water sets are useful uh, for various purposes. Some of them can come through surface hydrologic modeling, some of them can come from other sources like remote sensing or field surveys or some other thing. The major uh, uh, the characteristics which one can drive automatically area, perimeter, centroid of the water set, mean elevation, the mean slope, stream flow length and uh, mainly downstream flow length and uh, then length, uh, total length of streams present within one water set and shape factor and many more parameters can also be identified based on uh, the surface hydrologic modeling analysis. Where are the, what are the, where, what are the applications of uh, different uh, uh, these uh, water set characteristics like uh, area, uh, which is uh, important for hydraulic design, which reflects the volume of water generated from a rainfall. That means, uh, if a area of a water set is very small, then we know that uh, the contribution which will come in form of rainwater would be little less, but if it is very large, so area influences in that way. And it influences basically the volume of water which will come through an outlet of a water uh, shed. So, that is important. And second is uh, 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 that uh, water set uh, length, length uh, also plays because it decides the safe factor also. So, increases at uh, drainage increases uh, and L or length uh, can be denoted as L is important in uh, hydrologic computations. 
and the uh, water side length defines as distance measured along the main channel from the water side outlet to the basin divide at the that means up to the water side boundary and uh, water side length is measured along the principal flow path. So, the main stream within a water set which can be identified easily can be measured or in this one uh, when we are doing this analysis on GIS platform this can be measured automatically. Both area and uh, water set length uh, both can be used together. So, this are uh, measures of uh, water set size this may reflect uh, different aspects of size A indicates potential for rainfall to provide a volume of water that is the area and uh, water set length is computing time parameter and measure of travel time of water through a water set. So, uh, another factor which uh, as I have already indicated or characteristics which one can drive is water set, uh, slope, uh, uh, slope that is uh, flood magnitude reflects the momentum of uh, runoff slope is important factor in, in the momentum here and uh, water set slope reflects the rate of change of elevation as we know very well and uh, this can be determined like this. Uh, uh, you can use the elevation divided by flow length and uh, uh, water set shape uh, plays very important role that uh, water set have uh, infinite varieties of shapes all kinds of shapes and sizes of water sets are there. Uh, important thing is that uh, one water set ends another starts and this is a kind of global phenomena or globally a uh, coverage thing is there except when we reach to the coastal areas then things ends there. And uh, the water set shape uh, reflects the way that runoff will uh, bunch up at the outlet that how it will reach and uh, what time it would reach. So, I gave the example a circular saved water set would result in runoff from various parts of water set reaching outlet at the same time and may cause flooding. Whereas, uh, compared to circular a linear water set uh, of maybe of the same size of course, different shape may not cause flooding even the rainfall remains same in both shaped water sets. So, this is that is the importance of water set shape. Now, channel length also uh, indicates uh, uh, various uh, 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 hydrological characteristics of a water set and it is used for hydrologic uh, computations and uh, the distance measured uh, this channel length that is the distance measured along the main channel from the water set outlet to the end of the channel or almost near the uh, water set boundary. Uh, channel slope is also important uh, uh, which it, it can be uh, determined like uh, uh, this uh, channel uh, slope SC equal to delta EC oblique LC where delta EC is the difference in the elevation between the points defining the upper and lower ends of the channel and LC is the length of channel between the same two points. So, channel slope is important uh, 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 for uh, uh, some uh, hydrologic computations. Uh, one more uh, uh, output one can take uh, from this surface hydrologic modeling that is raindrop simulation or sorted path route. Uh, this is important in especially in pollution studies if we know the uh, point source pollution from where the pollution is coming then we can exactly track that uh, what would be the flow path of uh, that pollution. So, for example, here uh, if a rain a single rain drop uh, uh, drop is here then this is the path which is shown through the black line or black drainage will follow till the end of uh, uh, this uh, digital elevation model or uh, till the end of the or at the outlet. So, this can be uh, done very interactively the requirement is that the flow accumulation theme should be in the background wherever I will click. Uh, this will trace the path and this path is going to be always the shortest route. So, the uh, this uh, raindrop simulation or shortest path this traces the flow path of a point on a surface grid theme and the theme is flow accumulation very useful in point source pollution studies 
uh, as I have already mentioned. Now using flow direction theme which we have generated in very early stage of uh, surface hydrologic modeling and flow accumulation, these processes it is easy to compute a mass balance for each cell in terms of uh, uh, that is S equal to P minus I minus F minus E where S is surplus water per cell, P is the input precipitation and then fil infiltration F some water has to go downward. So that is counted and some water may go uh, outward that means uh, may be in form loss in form of evaporation or evapotranspiration. So when these things are there then we can calculate the surplus water per cell and that will decide basically the runoff. So cumulative flow over the net is then obtained by accumulating S that is the surplus water per cell over the flow direction grid and uh, this way we can calculate uh, surplus water. Uh, now uh, there, there are predictive equations uh, are another way to use the map overlay here uh, for runoff uh, related studies that water available for runoff equation is used by hydrologist uh, to use calculate the amount of water that will be available for runoff for a specific rainfall event and uh, based on the type of soil and land cover present at a location. So while these informations can be incorporated in, uh, into GIS along with your surface hydrologic modeling and uh, this uh, runoff equation uh, can be solved. So using the information you could uh, predict the amount of water available for runoff at every cell in a water set not only at the outlet, outlet but outlet of the water set but for every cell it can be calculated and this could be then accumulated across a flow direction surface and uh, this, is uh, this is very important for road engineers who would like to know that how much water will come at a uh, crosses that uh, drainage or at culvert uh, it will if it is designed. So uh, because uh, if a culvert if they put a culvert that is too small there could be a problem. So they would like to know that uh, and the how much runoff they are going to expect at a particular location. And uh, this is the flow chart for runoff calculations and uh, some of the parameters will come through surface hydrologic modeling, some will come from other sources like for example here of course our digital elevation model, field EM, then we get the field elevation, sink 1, flow direction and flow accumulation uh, available and uh, then uh, we, we, we finally uh, also include the uh, soil information, land use, land cover information, precipitation information in form of rainfall. We combine this one, this becomes the uh, runoff curve number and uh, then uh, whatever the water available for runoff that can be calculated at this stage, this comes for and finally accumulated water available for runoff at a particular location or for each cell can be calculated by this way. So this, this becomes very important. So some of the parameters uh, for uh, runoff calculations can come through surface hydrologic modeling. So that, that, therefore the surface hydrologic modeling based on the digital elevators and models play very important role for calculating uh, surface runoff. There are other variety of types of hydrologic variables and that can also be generated using uh, surface hydrology modeling over ADM uh, like uh, flow direction grids basis way, uh, for a wide range of dynamic modeling tools uh, can be used. Now I am going to discuss uh, three indices here, one index, one index we have already discussed uh, uh, earlier in earlier discussions. Now the, uh, the topographic positioning index that is the index which we have already discussed. Now three indices which we are going to discuss among them the first one is topographic wetness index uh, which basically uh, uh, we calculate uh, that uh, the topographic index uh, which uh, provides us the steady state uh, wetness index uh, of the soil 
and in some areas this TWI that is the topographic wetness index uh, has been shown in some study areas to predict uh, solum that the surface and subsoil uh, layers depth. So, for that purpose this wetness and uh, this wetness index also plays very important role again in case of flood studies, in case of soil erosion studies or maybe in agricultural studies. So, it involves the upslope contributing area uh, which can be calculated in surface hydrology modeling, a slope raster that is uh, uh, the slope map of a DM and a couple of other geometric uh, functions are used while calculating topographic uh, wetness index. And this is one example on the same digital elevation model which we have been using in this uh, course. And uh, when it was calculated, uh, we get these uh, different values, the, the, the maximum uh, important point here to note that the maximum wetness uh, would be of course, uh, where the drainage lines are there as you can see the values are very high and wherever these uh, ridge lines are there means water set boundaries the, the wetness index is less because this is uh, as name implies this is topographic wetness index based on topography as expected that the valleys will have more wetness and ridges will have less wetness. So, the value of each cell in the output raster uh, is the value in a flow accumulation raster for a corresponding DM. So, this value of uh, TPI, uh, TWI and the highest CTI or uh, TWI uh, values represent drainage depressions and lower values represent the crest or ridges. So, this is uh, very important from that point of view and uh, what are the applications uh, of uh, this? as I have already mentioned that in surface runoff calculations, also in flood studies and in soil erosion and other kind of studies, this topographic wetness index can be used. Also maybe in mountain regions uh, for landslide studies, for accurate prediction, landslide hazard zonation, the, this topographic wetness index can also be used because landslides are also influenced by the soil moisture. Now, the another index uh, which we, we can calculate using a digital elevation model which is another derivative of digital elevation model is a sediment transport index and this sediment transport index is basically is the movement of sediment uh, typically due to combination of gravity acting on the sediment and or the movement of fluid in which the sediment is entrained. So, this, uh, uh, this is calculated the sediment uh, transport as we know will occur through a natural system or drainage systems where the particles are clastic rocks, maybe sand, gravels, boulders, etc., mud and clay, fluid is air, water or ice. But in, in uh, normally in the, uh, the case which we are going to discuss related with drainage systems and other is water and the force of gravity acts to move the particles along the sloping surface on which they are residing. So, the sediment transport uh, due to fluid motion in our case is water motion occurs in rivers, oceans, lakes, seas and other bodies of water due to uh, current and tides. Generally, in the example which we have taken does not include the coastal areas or sea parts, so it is only hilly region. But uh, this sediment transport index uh, calculation has been done on the, the digital elevation model and uh, this is again uh, the output of sediment transport index is again very useful in soil erosion studies. So, as you can see that uh, at places it is having very high value and uh, mainly maybe on the where the sharp escarpments and other things are there. Uh, where we may have the very uh, uh, high values because again the input is main input is here is the digital elevation model or terrain. So, it's a top, it is influenced by the topography or ruggedness of the topography this sediment transport index. So, this characterizes the process of erosion and deposition. So, in those uh, studies related with erosion sediment transport this, uh, this can be used. And this uh, sediment transport index also 
presents the effects of topography on soil loss. So, in soil loss modeling or uh, such a erosional, soil erosional studies uh, can be used, can vary along the length of a stream and uh, this uh, sediment transport uh, index can vary along a drainage, particular drainage line. And uh, this uh, sediment transport uh, is important in sedimentary geology, gene geomorphology, civil engineering and environmental engineering. And uh, this uh, knowledge of sediment transport is uh, most often used to determine whether erosion or deposition will occur and uh, the magnitude of this erosion or deposition and the time and distance over which it will occur. So, it is very important to know along a drainage uh, system or a stream that where deposition will occur, where erosion will occur and accordingly the uh, civil structures can be located. So, that is why sediment transport index is very well. And the last uh, index uh, here uh, which we are going to discuss which again can come uh, based on a digital elevation model analysis is a stream power index. As name implies that is the rate of energy of flowing water is expanded, uh, exp expanded in the uh, on the bed and the banks of a channel. So, how much basically how much uh, power a, a stream will have and a, it is the potential of flow water to perform uh, geomorphic uh, work. Basically, again it will come back again to the erosion and deposition and uh, depositional processes and a steam power can be calculated again the input is digital elevation model. So, a steam power index can be used to describe potential flow erosion and related landscape processes uh, especially uh, fluvial processes are uh, 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 discussed here and that is steam power or index or that uh, SI is uh, equal to the CA multiplied by GA and uh, so CA and G are the specific catchment area and uh, G is the gradient respectively. As a specific catchment area and gradient increase the amount of water uh, contributed by upslope areas and the velocity of water flow will also increase. Hence, therefore, there will be a stream power index and erosion risk increases. So, if uh, there is a high velocity and uh, the upslope areas are contributing more, then there are chances of more erosion. Whereas, if a uh, stream power index uh, uh, can control the potential erosive power of overland flows, thickness of soil horizon, organic matter, uh, pH, silt, uh, sand content, plant cover distributions etcetera. So, they will influence basically the stream power index. Uh, example here is stream power index as you can see that along a major drainage it is shown high values in rest of the areas in this particular example they are almost uh, having the, the uh, low, uh, uh, low stream power index only along the major lines we expect to have a uh, high uh, steam power values and uh, this is again indicator of uh, erosive power of uh, overland flow. So, this brings to the end of uh, surface hydrologic modeling and uh, in this uh, two lectures we have discussed different outputs and how they can be used for various kinds of studies related with hydrology or civil engineering. Thank you very much.